Um, just want to welcome everybody again back to the show, and um, just trust that today will be a blessing for you guys. Um, with with my great honor and privilege, uh, we have today Brother Joe and Doug Hagman on the show with us today. Um, but first, uh, Brother Marcus, are you there? Brother, I am here and ready to praise the Lord and magnify the Lord tonight. <laughs> well, praise God, praise God. Brother Doug, uh, Jack, <laughs> Doug and Joe, are you there? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, is your dad there, um, or is he just needing a little bit of time? Uh, he said he'd be a few minutes late. I don't know if he, you guys saw see him called in yet or not. Uh, he'll be calling from Skype, but um, he will be here shortly if he's not here yet. Okay, okay. Well, Brother Marcus, I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, take this away because you got a couple announcements to make. Yeah, just a couple things, first of all. Uh, my heart is just excited tonight to have uh, Brother Doug and Brother Joe. And um, I want to give a shout-out tonight to all the worship warriors out there listening to us across the nation and afar. And the scripture I want to share quickly is Psalms 150, which says, Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So, saints, right there where you're at tonight, just lift up your voice and give the Lord a good shout tonight of appreciation and love. And um, I want to share something Lord dropped in my spirit right before radio show time tonight. And uh, I want you to write this down. Um, I believe the Spirit of God dropped this in my heart. And uh, where the Lord said, prepare for the unexpected by being obedient to do the unexpected. Let me just say that again quickly. Prepare for the unexpected by being obedient to do the unexpected. We're living in times right now of uncertainty. But the Lord is with us, and he's going to get us through unexpected times by allowing us to be obedient to his voice by doing some unexpected things. So just receive that to your spirit tonight. I also want to give a shout-out quickly to Dave and Jerry in Colorado. Um, you're so special. You and the Lord, don't, you, <laughs> you just, you're just awesome. I want to thank you tonight for uh, being our prayer uh, partners and intercessors and friends. And um, tonight, uh, I'm excited um, because um, we have the two gentlemen that were actually inspiring us, uh, Brother Curtis and myself, to um, do our, the radio. And um, the Lord has spoken to me last year about uh, getting on radio. And, of course, uh, when I ran that by Brother Curtis, uh, we both thought it might be from a, a local uh, radio program station here on the res the reservation and we looked into it and well Curtis can tell you the doors were slammed in our face and I knew I had heard from the Lord so the next thing I know uh, the Lord just used Brother Doug and Joe Hagman as inspiration and uh, as a father and son team I said well brother uh, maybe we can do the same thing and the next thing I know uh, Brother Jose our blessed brother uh, was in connection with us and um, communication with us and so here we are and uh, so we have the Lord to thank, we have Brother Doug and Joe Hagman to thank, and we have Holy Jose to thank for making this possible uh, for us to be out here. And I do have some good news for all our listeners. You've been writing, emailing, and uh, calling us about uh, doing more teaching. Well, I've got some good news, and we'll announce more about that later. But um, we are going to start a Sunday night show also as well. And we'll be teaching on, of course, the uncompromised Word of God, uh, revelation the Holy Spirit's giving us for this present time. And um, you're going to enjoy it. We'll be sharing things you won't hear from most um, religious circles. Uh, we'll be sharing the uh, Word of God in power and demonstration of the Spirit. And so I'm excited about that because obviously you've been praying about this. You've been desiring us to do it. So uh, we're going to step up and we're going to do... Uh, what uh, we've been called to do. That's preach and teach and prophesy the word of the Lord and move in the power demonstration of the Spirit. Amen. So um, your prayers have been answered out there in Radio Land. And thank you all for your kind prayers, your support, and every way uh, that you've shown it to us. And you, you've just been great. We want to thank you again. Um, that being said, uh, Brother Joe, welcome to the show tonight. And uh, Brother Doug, if you're there, welcome tonight. And uh, if you're not there, Brother Doug, we're going to let Joe step up and open the door and take us wherever you want to go tonight, Brother. We're looking forward to an awesome show with you and your father. And uh, again, we thank you for being our special guest tonight. And want to thank
thank you again for inspiring us to be here uh, on radio ourselves. Well, thank you, Curtis and Brother Marcus. It's a pleasure to, to be here. Uh, I had a chance to, to listen to all your previous shows. I caught up on a few today, and you wow. guys do a fantastic job. And, uh, you know, to say that we're your inspiration, uh, that, that's uh, such a, uh, a humbling, to say the least. But, you know, what you have done by taking the step and by starting the show, uh, that is definitely uh, one thing that the Lord led you guys to do because the, the, this action part of our faith where we uh, help others and you know give money and support to the needy and uh, preach the, the word, that is something that uh, few people actually do. And it is uh, great to see you guys on the radio. I know the, the level of intensity for uh, this, the the word and, and the Lord's salvation and how you want to spread that uh, word of grace and, and salvation to people. I know that you, Brother Marcus and Curtis, have great hearts and you just want to see people do better. Your mission in life is just to help people and spread the word of the Lord and you do such a good job at that. Now to have you on the radio, it's a, a blessing to all, all of us. Well, Brother Joe, I feel humbled by you know, those words um, because you know, uh, we are simply just uh, servants of the Lord, but the Lord has opened that door for us uh, unexpectedly. Um, and I, I'm thankful tonight that we have the opportunity to reach out there via the radio waves and take the word of God to um, the people, to the listeners, to the truly hungry and thirsty for things of God. And, you know, and, and Brother Joe, I'm sure you have been, you know, uh, saved long enough to know that, you know, the times we live in that, there seems to be a lack of the true Word of God being preached and the true uh, Word of God being taught uh, in most religious circles. Um, can, can you, you know, just um, address that for just a moment, the, the lack of the sound uh, teaching? Now, there are exceptions, of course, because on your program, you have Brother David Langford and Steve Quell and others who are just uh, unashamed, amen, of, of gospel and boldly teach and preach the word. So there are exceptions, but do you agree, Brother Joe, that for the, for the most part there, there seems to be a lack of the true teaching of the word of God today in the land? Absolutely, I do. And I believe, uh, as the word says, that we are very close to the end times, if not in the, in the end times, in the birth pains. Uh, we're told in, in many parts of the Old and New Testament from the prophets of the Old Testament to the saints and apostles in the New Testament that there would be so much of this. And one example in Scripture, it's a, a, a well-used verse is in Second Peter where it says, Second uh, Peter 1, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many will, shall follow their perilous ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And, and we're told in other verses that, that about the apostasy. And I truly believe that we are living and seeing and witnessing the apostasy today uh, on this earth right now. Amen. That's a very apropos verse that you just read because truly, you know, we're in a time of great deception and uh, we are in those times that Satan is bringing every heresy uh, that he can uh, into the land to deceive, to defile, to cause people to fall away. And unfortunately, the worst is yet ahead. We're just seeing the tip of the iceberg right now, Brother Joe, uh, with uh, what's taking place um, in most uh, organized churches. And uh, that being said, there are people out there that love Jesus with all their heart. They want to know the truth. They want to be free. They want to walk and live with, with, in the Lord's presence. And uh, those are the kind of people that tune into your program and that tune into our program because they know they're going to get fed. Uh, they're going to get uh, taught um, information that is so pertinent and relevant as you do on your show. Um, they need to know that. In fact, I've told people to tune in to the Hagman Show every night of the week, you know, that you're on. Listen to your program because you have so many uh, amazing things to share. Your um, uh, research is, is so uh, important that you do. And what you share.
share is so important and you did an outstanding job you and your father uh, in, in presenting that information and, and that news but what makes your show so distinct is the fact that unlike most so-called news programs um, you don't just repeat headlines you do active investigation and research and bring people uh, up to date relevant information that they need to know to be prepared for what's coming ahead but on top of that you have a cutting edge, you know, uh, spiritual dimension in your program by having uh, men of God like Pastor Langford and others on that share and, and, and just uh, dispense the uncompromised word of God. And so I, I commend you again uh, for, you know, the um, dual uh, purpose that you serve uh, the listeners out there by not only giving them relevant information, but also uh, allowing the word of God to be uh, in your platform. you as well as you have uh, been a part of our show um, I guess several times and have uh, really touched so many people through your uh, spiritual knowledge and, and heart uh, speaking from the heart and people when they hear your voice and they hear what you're talking about they know that the Holy Spirit is with you and uh, that's rare in today's day and age and it is a blessing to have you guys and, and other guests uh, that we have come on the show frequently to come on because there is a a thirst for the truth as you, we were talking before the show there is a, a huge truth a push for the truth of the word truth in the news truth from wherever it, it comes from and the mainstream media is and has been uh, intentionally misleading people the churches in some cases and Sadly to say, I would say it's the majority of churches, no matter the denomination, are either picking and choosing which chapters and, and books they're going to teach from, and refusing to talk about you know sin. And uh, there's no, you don't feel condemned when you come out of a lot of churches today. You, have, you hear the gospel of prosperity, this uh, gospel of lies of the you know what what they say is doctor demon uh doctrines of devils and it yeah. says in first Timothy uh four two or four one and it says that in there now spirit speaketh expressly that in a lighter times shall herself depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy and having their conscience here to the hot iron. We see that this happening all over the place and this is a sat satanic agents, whether willingly or unknowingly, uh, twisting Christian literature, Christian scripture, or in other cases, you know, teaching uh, mystery, religious, occult worship. And that is what the Bible refers to as, you know, the gate to hell is wide and the path to heaven is, is narrow and few will find it. Because either, even if you don't, and are not a you know satanic occult worshiper. If you are of the world and you're in the church, it's a, it's a lukewarmness. If you're not walking in the spirit, you're walking in, in luke, you're being lukewarm, as Revelation says. And people don't understand that that is just as bad, if not worse, as being on the other side. It says, "I would rather have you be hot or cold than to be lukewarm." Brother Joe, let me just commend you on your, you know, your study of the Word of God because, I, you know, I've seen such a growth in your spirit um, because you've given yourself to the Lord, you've given yourself to prayer, and you've given yourself to the Word of God, and uh, it, it is showing, and um, God is doing great things in you and your father both, and um, he, he, what you were saying reminded me of that scripture, um, 2 uh, Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 2, uh, 3 or 4, I'd like to read that real quick, it says, preach the Word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For well, the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And um, what my comment is quickly is that um, we are seeing a generation of people who are in the church system who seemingly want something easy, something soft, and something palatable that simply makes them feel good. But when the Word of God 
God says that we're supposed to uh, preach the word, that also includes reproving people for sin and rebuking uh, spirits of darkness and, and exposing darkness. Um, and, and when you see the pulpits back off from that responsibility, what they're doing is they're opening up their membership to then find teachers who will uh, itch their ears, speak things into their ears that makes them feel good, but no conviction of sin. And uh, I think you just did very well, uh, Brother Joel, you know, in what you shared uh, in respect to the state of the spirituality that we see in the land today. There is that apostasy, there's that falling away, people turning to fables and, and, and philosophies of men and doctrines of demons, doctrines of devils. And um, again, unfortunately, I believe it's going to get worse, but thank God for those out there tonight that uh, are willing to pay any price to hear the truth. And um, I know we're getting ready to share some things, Brother Joe, on our uh, radio program that's going to be very profound. I say that to the glory of God and to His glory only. Uh, but we, 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 we want people to hear the truth, to know the truth, because the truth is the only thing that's going to set them free and make them free in Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so few people are, are doing, you know, what the, the true and right way of, of teaching and instructing people, you know, we always tell people not to listen or believe what we say, but to take what we say and what everybody else says and take it to prayer and take it to research and people need to do their own homework. And my dad says that people need to read their own mail from the Lord. You know, we each have a, a job here. We each have a purpose here that the Lord put us here to do. And if we are not praying, praying and communicating with him, uh, we'll never be able to figure out what it is we're supposed to do. And if that's what we're, we are in life, then what is our purpose here? We're not serving Him. Um, so, you know, we're serving the other side. So all of us uh, need to pray and, and find whatever it is He wills for us to do in our lives. What your father said concerning searching out the truth for yourself. And, um, you know, we pray for a lot of people and we're always prophesying the word of the Lord to people. And, and you know, we, we prophesy by the spirit of truth. Uh, the Lord confirms, you know, uh, what we say uh, by his spirit. Uh, there's an inner witness and unction of what we speak to people. And um, now that being said, uh, when I gave Curtis the word of the Lord, uh, a few years ago, that brought him to Jesus. True prophecy from true prophetic people always exalt Jesus and not men or not a ministry. And uh, having that particular gift, you know, that was given to me by the grace of God, and and using it responsibly, because uh, I love to prophesy the word of the Lord to people. Uh, we don't prophesy our own words; we prophesy what His word is. And we see lives change. But after we release the word of the Lord to people, we always tell them, okay, don't become dependent upon the gift. Don't become dependent upon an office, even though it is an authentic, legitimate office in the fivefold ministry. We always point people back to Jesus. Because after we even release the true word you know, of the Lord to them, their faith is not to be in men. Their faith is to be in Jesus. We never turn attention to ourselves or to a ministry. We turn people to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And, and, and you know when the Holy Spirit is operating and moving, because when the Holy Spirit is present, He's always directing people to worship Jesus. He's always lifting Jesus up. He's always taking that which is of Jesus and showing it to the believers who are hungry for Him. And so um, my, my point is tonight is that whoever we pray for, minister to, prophesy to, teach, or whatever. Do as Brother Joel and Brother Doug said. You take what we have said to the Word of God, and you look line upon line, precept upon precept, and search out the truth for yourself, and with the Holy Spirit who is your teacher. Because one danger of reading the Bible without the teacher is that you think you become the teacher when you're still just a student. <laughs> but Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. He will be your teacher. So I want to just ask tonight that everybody out there that who loves the Lord, who loves Jesus, who loves the Word of God, always ask the 
Holy Spirit. Before you go into your time of devotion or reading the Bible, always ask the Holy Spirit to be your teacher. Ask Him to open your eyes of understanding that you might have ears to hear what the Word says and eyes to see what is in that Word. Uh, with, with your good Absolutely. And, you know, we need to be diligent in our seeking and, and walk with the Lord because we have a satanic element that is in every part of our society, whether it's government, religion, uh, economics, it is all over, you know, we have a materialistic, money-hungry, instant gratification type of world. Unless you are on the other part of that, you know, making less than two dollars a day, living in conditions, uh, you know, of starvation and, and uh, horrible poverty. So, I mean, we it says in the, in the scriptures that you know, the devil is constantly uh, looking to devour those who he can. And if we are not devoted, if we are not motivated to stay in study and prayer and stay in scripture, we are going to lose our foundation, which will put us in danger of, of being deceived and being destroyed by, by the devil. And sadly, I feel that so many people, even many people who call themselves Christians, are so lost, yet in their mind, they'll tell you, you know, how things are and how... Uh, you know, the, the ego and pride and the different things that we see that play humanity's mind and uh, bring us down. But in reality, there are few people, few with real people out there teaching what is right uh, without an agenda. And I know you guys are, are one of those people. And hopefully, you know, a lot of the listeners, a lot of the people out there who are of sound doctrine and, and with the Lord and the Holy Spirit, we'll start to radio shows or, or newsletters, websites, whatever they can do to get that, uh, push people in the right direction, to share with people how to get in the right direction, because so many are lost and uh, it's only going to get worse unless, you know, more people start to come to that point where they want and are hungry for, for that knowledge of the Lord. Well, I, I, I think it's so important what you said, too, is uh, the fact that time is short, and what people need to do is to be aware of the shortness of the times we live in. But then people of faith uh, who have the legitimate faith of God, they're going to start taking action. In fact, I think that work that uh, I shared uh, right at the head of the program about uh, preparing uh, for the unexpected by being obedient to do the unexpected. I think there's people I heard tonight, Brother Joe, that have got God-given gifts, and um, some have been in institutional churches for a long time, and they've not found their place. They've not found their God-given role, and uh, a lot of them have had to exit mainstream Christianity because uh, they were not being uh, recognized for their God-given gifts, not being allowed to function and operate. And so the Lord has had to pull them to the desert, to the backside of the desert for a season and time. Um, and now God's beginning to speak to people. Uh, he's revealing what their gifts are to them. Now, some don't know what their gifts are. And, and I, I want to say to those folks that keep seeking the Lord because He will show and confirm what your God-given gifts are. And many of you out there tonight listening, you've been waiting for the timing of the Lord to be raised up and put into your uh, role on responsible fulfillment for your ministry. And let me say this, ministry is not just a time behind a pulpit on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night prayer meeting. Ministry is a lifestyle. Ministry is something we do every day. Uh, whether you're going to school or working at a business or uh, whatever you might be doing uh, as far as occupation, you can still have a ministry uh, at the same time. Now, there are some tonight out there that I believe that you've been in the workforce for a time and season. I believe the Lord is going to release some people out there into full-time ministry. And uh, the thing is, wait upon the Lord and don't just go, but wait for the Lord to send you and commission you and appoint you and when he does that, he'll also confirm that by uh, the mouth 
of two or three witnesses. So, Brother Joe, I think what we're going to see is people come alive in their gifts and callings, uh, whether it be, you know, uh, writing, uh, singing, ministering, uh, working in uh, an entrepreneurial role uh, for the glory of God and, and, and bringing finances into the kingdom. Uh, but it's all about taking action. I was so happy to hear your dad uh, on a recent program say, we need to pray, but we also need to take action because true faith always will be demonstrated in by righteous works. We're not saved by works, but those who are saved by grace will do righteous works at the leading of the Holy Ghost. Brother Marcus. And um, uh, Brother Joe, uh, uh, just real quick, I'd like, I'm sorry, I know that when my dad's coming on, when he's ready, I'll let you guys know he's going to send me a, a message. Uh, All right, yeah, so sorry, definitely. Go ahead. No, no problem. Um, I just want to go back to something you touched on earlier, talking about uh, the satanic things going on in the church. Can you elaborate back on that, brother? Because I know you've done some research uh, on this, and you were sharing with me, um, you know, before before the show. Um, so, brother, if you, if you would, just expand a little bit upon that. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've done so much research in the last few days on this topic, which I... I started on researching uh, on another topic, and then it led me to back to the UN, uh, Lucius Trust, and their one world religion, one world government, uh, one world religious order uh, quest, and there is so much out there, and, and here I'm going to share a few quotes with you from our leaders in our, our time, from popes to uh, heads of state to president. But one thing that, this is one that caught me off guard, and I knew Walter Cronkite uh, was part of this problem of the, the social engineering and uh, misleading people, but I did not know how <laughs> evil uh, this man was. He, he, made a, he made a quote, and he talks about a world government being created. He says, it seems to many of us that if we avoid the eventual catastrophic world conflict, we must strengthen the United Nations as a first step towards a world government pattern after our own government with the legislature, executive, and judiciary to police and enforce its international laws and to keep peace. To do that, we as Americans want to yield up our sovereignty. That would be a better pill and take a lot of courage and a lot of faith in the new order. Pat Robinson has written a book a few years ago that said we should have a world government, but only when the Messiah arrives. He wrote, literally, any attempt to achieve world order before that time must be the work of the devil. Well, join me. I'm glad to sit here at the right hand of Satan. That was from Walter Bonk. Wow. He's an icon of, I mean, he is the face of TV news broadcasting. And, you know, this is one man, uh, one quote. But there are hundreds of these from people of all, in all parts of society. And it, and it goes as deep, and, and those who know or are not familiar with the UN, they have set up um, these non-governmental governmental institutions, and what they are doing uh, are, are using people like Blavatsky and Alice Bailey, Albert Pike, um, the, these people who are of the uh, mystery religion, the occult. And they have incorporated this into a gospel of interfaith or uh, inclusion, as some call it, the gospel of inclusion. And what we see here is this religion of the new world order, the religion of Satan on earth, the end times one world order that is talked about. And there are as I said, institutions, as the United Nations Religious Organization, the, um, and then there's so many more, I, I could name a list of a hundred of them, uh, if I brought them up, UNESCO, uh, so many, and they're in all parts, environmental, and every issue that we're dealing with, but what they are doing is, through the United Nations, they've been on a, a course to unite the world's religions, and in a book written by Robert Mueller, New Genesis, New Genesis shaping a global spirituality, spirituality. 
he explains, uh, Robert Mueller explains, how the Catholic upbringing he had ultimately uh, led him to embrace Buddhism and atheistic religion of the UN. And he says that the UN, like global government and global religion, is mankind's only hope. And it's not a question of if, but when. Uh, when this is implemented. And there are countless uh, people need to really research this because this is a, a, a serious and scary uh, reality in our time. They say, and this from uh, uh, one of the documents I was reading, that if not, a, it's not a question of if, if, but when. That this has already been established. That the reason that we're seeing it now is because. They have, they have been behind, been behind closed, closed doors, doors planning this, this for so long, so long that it is so close to being, to being fruit and fruit coming to fruition, fruition they no longer they need, to need to hide it. So when you have when you have, when you have the, the, the satanic, satanic planners, planners coming out and saying things like this, like this. We, need to, we need to take, to take notice, notice because, because this is a reality, it is going to happen, and it's going to happen as, like the scripture says, there is no peace on this earth. And it's going to be like the phoenix rising from the ashes, order out of chaos. They are going to uh, create some sort of global catastrophe, and out of this will be uh, the rise of the one world religion. As the scripture states, Christianity and Christians specifically have been persecuted for their faith. Well, this is going to get much worse, and it is getting worse now. And this is something that will continue. Christianity will be wiped off the map because Christian, true Christianity is anti one world religion. So whether it's through death or silence or however they do it, uh, they are they are attacking Christians now. They say that the Department of Homeland Security that if you're a Christian or have a Christian identity, you are a domestic terrorist. I was listening to satellite radio yesterday on my way home from the show, and there was a guy on named Mike Miller, I believe. And he had a caller who was stating, you know, they were talking about the gay marriage issues. Now, in I think 15 states now, voters have voted to ban gay marriage and judges have overturned it, calling it unconstitutional. And a caller called in and made that point. Just He wasn't even picking a sign as to whether he was pro or con with gay marriage. He was saying that the judges doing this, how can they override the vote of the people? And after he hung up, the, this host went on this anti-Christian tirade saying, you know, what the caller is hateful beliefs and Christianity uh, is hateful and, and bigoted because they are against gay marriage and um, that, I mean, he was mocking God. He, it started as a, against the caller and went against, and ended against the Lord. It was horrible and I could not believe, when I, when, when I got out of the car, I actually prayed and, and I, I said to the Lord, and I said it out loud, I said, I'm sorry, I just listened to that. I could not believe I heard that on the radio. I mean, it was so evil and, and hateful. I just couldn't believe it. And we are seeing this new uh, false religion being uh, taught in the schools while Christianity or people who, teachers who give Bibles to the children are being fired. Uh, well, you know, the Ten Commandments are being taken off the steps of Capitol buildings and courthouse buildings everywhere, and satanic monuments are being erected next to them. We are seeing this change in the way people. Uh, and then we, there's no opposition to it. Where is the Christian voice? Where are the churches speaking out against it? Well, I, I think that is a sign of the times that when the pulpits become scared, um, the pulpits become um, uh, sh shirking the responsibility in, in preaching the whole uncompromised truth of the word, reproving sin, rebuking sin, that we open up, you know, the gates of hell to bring more darkness in more quickly um, into our nation. And Brother Joe, uh, again, like you said, it's hard.
hard sometimes to believe what you hear on TV and uh, what you hear on the radio because evil is becoming very bold right now. And uh, evil is becoming very deceptive right now. In fact, um, but Brother Joel, have you ever heard, uh, and after I uh, share this, I want, I want you to go back and expand some more uh, on the satanic infiltration uh, in our nation, because uh, people need to know that this is happening, uh, you know, and the details behind it. But have you ever heard the term idol scene? Uh, no. No. Okay, well, uh, the term idol scene is, is really a new spiritual deception um, in which, uh, like teenagers, and what they do, they they get digitally high by uh, playing specific internet videos uh, through their headphones, and the headphones use repetitive tones uh, to create like a binaural beats, which basically have been shown in clinical studies to induce different brainwave states that make uh, sounds appear to come from the center of their head. So basically, what is being done by satanic influence is they're being um, um, programmed to think that the certain sounds, which can sometimes appear as voices through this process, what they call idosing, and, and, and it opens up uh, avenues for spiritual deception. So, so, Brother Joel, do, do you believe that we're seeing a, a, a technology that is being formed and created and used against the uh, society in, in general, but also even believers themselves, I believe, Brother Joel, you know, could, could they not be wrongly influenced by listening to the wrong things or watching the wrong things through the satanic plot? Absolutely. Uh, you, you are 100% correct. correct. Well, knowingly or subliminally, the music we listen to, the programming that's on TV that we watch, the movies, uh, the people we hang around, the places we go have an influence, whether we know it or, like I said, could be subliminally uh, or not known. We know that TV puts you in a hypnotic type state um, from the flicker rate. But the, the, the level, and I found the quote I was looking for here, it says, unbeknownst to the majority of people on Earth, the creation of such an atmosphere has been well underway for many decades. This talking about the one world religion. It is only now, since the quest is virtually achieved, that the partners, or the planners, are going public. This is why organizations like the United Nations can give so much influence so quickly. It also explains why Pope John Paul II was willing to declare in 1994 that Muslims also have salvation. Uh, it goes on to say also that the conflicts among nations will continue to ignite dangerously uh, and create wars on our earth. Global planners have concluded that war will never be eliminated unless some form of world government replaces the era of nation states. They talk about a new age. They say shaping global spirituality since 1950. Robert Mueller of the UN, in his book, The New Genesis, Shaping Global Spirituality, uh, who I mentioned earlier. And folks, if you want to research it, just research his name, you'll find thousands of quotes. They created a World Council of Churches in 1948. Now, it's interesting that in 1947, we had the restoration of Israel for the third time as a nation, which was prophesied about and prophesied about being in the end times when this happens. Yes. So, so uh, right, right after that, after that we, we see, we see uh, uh, I, this push from the UN, the UN um, um, and these non-governmental organizations, organizations that, that have popped up, you know, yeah. it says after the Second World War, they established the World Council of Churches in order to work for the fuller unity and interfaith of the church. And what are the Christians, my question here when I'm reading some of this stuff, are what are the Christians True Christians, um, um, where do they end up in this one world religion? And, and where, this one world religion, they talk about the coming Messiah. They say that, Christ, that Jesus Christ is, a, is coming back to earth as a man to teach, the world teacher. But we have quotes from people like David Spangler, the head of the planetary, former head of the planetary initiative at the UN. No one will enter the new age, no one will enter the new world order unless he or she takes an oath to Lucifer. Uh, another quote is that um, 
that you will need to take an oath to that Lucifer is the ultimate uh, source of wisdom and the one true God, as it says in this here, the acceptance of Lucifer. It says, whatever the theology we adhere to, we must include the acceptance of Lucifer. We are then told that as part of our theology, we must learn from religions and embrace them. This is called interfaith. <laughs> from this time, brothers, brothers and sisters, to what end? Also, it, here in, in this document I'm reading called Ecumenalism, it says, uh, and something that the Bible says in Ephesians, you know, we're in a spiritual battle. We need to have spiritual war weapons. And you, Brother Marcus and Curtis, do an excellent job of explaining what our, what the spiritual battle is and how we fight in it. But they say uh, they one man who wrote a book towards a global ethic and initial declaration, his name is Haas Kung, he's a Catholic theologian. He says, um, um, one of these core values of religion is to believe, or one of these core values is to believe that each religion is a valid path to God. A Bible-based Christian cannot accept this. To not accept this, of course, is not a license for Christians to insult, hate, or kill people of other religious persuasions. A Bible-based Christianity is a threat to the New World Order. The battle is spiritual, after all. They perceive Christianity not not, 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 uh, not, not Muslim religion, religion not, not Buddhism, not, not Buddhism, not any other religion, any other only religion, Christianity, Christianity they perceive as a threat as to their new world order. New world order. Now that tells you something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, does, doesn't that strike you as odd that, you know, that they're, that every single nation out there, they're, sing, they're, they're singling out Christians. Why? It, it's not because of anything other than they know who the one true God is. Because the Bible talks about that the devils believe Jesus and tremble. <laughs> you know, they, they know Jesus yeah. and tremble. Now tell me what this reminds you of, guys. It says, any nation that does not bend to the will of the international community faces economic sanctions uh, and military action. The time will soon come when the sanctions will be imposed on the individual level. Individuals will be forced to pledge allegiance to the United Nations and is now forming world religion. If they refuse, they will be boycotted by the cashless society of the New World, new world Order and will not be permitted to buy or sell. That, that right there is the mark of the beast, plain and simple. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. it's, it, it, it's the beginning stages. And brothers and sisters, you know, I know that uh, me and Joe were actually talking earlier um, before the show, and I guess there were some people saying, well, you know, you guys just share nothing but, you know, all this and that, you know, all doom and gloom. But no, brothers, you guys just understand what we're sharing here. I mean, you know, yes, we can go we can go about and just, just totally forget forget about these things that are being shared here tonight and continue living our lives happily happy go lucky well that'll never happen you know that's just propaganda that's just lies and all this and that um but brothers and sisters seriously wake up open up your eyes and you know the bible talks about having a righteous anger you know and that's what this is have a righteous anger towards these things because you know because the devil and his, his minions are, are going to be very bold in this coming time and season you're going to start seeing more and more of the satanic out in the open, whereas before, and I, I just like to touch on this real quick, and I, I, I'll, I'll give it back over to Joe, but if you think, if your picture, most people picture satanic cults as young kids running around and, you know, doing stupid stuff, well, yes, that's the beginning stages of it, but what you don't see is the darker and deeper things behind that. Um, I'm talking about the hu actual human sacrifices, how they're able to get away with it, the satanic people that are actually molesting and just, just, just just, just raping people and just doing some god-awful things and then getting away with it because the government has their back, because Satan is in the government. <laughs> and uh, Brother Joe, if you would, just expand upon that. Yeah, uh, you're exactly correct. And uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Alistair Crowley wrote a book that I recently downloaded and, and read on... Uh, it's called, it's called Magic, Magic in Theory and Practice, theory and where he talks about he talks the sacrificing, the sacrificing of, of humans. He, he, he goes on to describe, and he says, uh, when choosing a victim, sacrifice, uh, a young male of high intelligence is the uh, best sacrifice. 
kill sacrifice ritual. And he goes on to explain why. But, I mean, and this was written years ago, you know, decades ago. These people, and I know uh, people like Russ Bizdar, uh, who are on the front lines of the satanic ritual abuse, they see this stuff all the time. They understand that people are being sacrificed. They are being murdered, and we see it in abortions. Um, we see it in many other ways, wars, and you know, drone strikes. And we don't know the how far to the ends of their thoughts are dedicated to the devil and what they do. How much of that is for uh, the Satan as a religion that they practice? But we're seeing but this we're culture seeing of murder, murder death, what, death. kind of like what we've seen, the Bible says about the devil. Uh, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what we are seeing today, whether it is through abortion, whether it is through um, the promoting of hate or uh, promoting of poverty or creating poverty. Uh, we see our nation is in a time of economic crisis right now. We went from the most prosperous nation in the history of the earth to uh, what we see today, which is it has been kicked apart like a carcass by crows. And, you know, now the middle class is, is in poverty, pretty much. And health care is going to kick in, and we haven't even seen the effects of that economically yet. Well, uh, Brother Joe, Brother I want to um, say that you know you're, you're doing an excellent job on what the Scripture commands us to do. Uh, the Bible commands us in Ephesians, uh, the fifth chapter, to expose uh, the unfruitful works of darkness. And um, just to address the comment that uh, Brother Curtis brought to our attention, the people out there, you know, uh, they say that all we share is doom and gloom. Well. People who have that mentality are usually are the ones that have their heads in the sand and are not doing anything for anybody but themselves anyway. But that should not keep us from doing what the Bible says, expose the darkness, the unfruitful works of darkness. That's a biblical command. And that's exactly what Doug and Joe do every day of the week because after you expose the darkness, it gives people an opportunity to see the light of truth which is found in the Word of God. By the Holy Spirit. And so a lot of people don't want the darkness exposed because then if it's exposed, they have a responsibility to make a choice or to make decisions. And a lot of people don't want to deal with the truth. They'd rather stay in darkness and not sit exposed because it brings them to a place of making decisions themselves. Well, would you agree with that, Brother Joe? Absolutely, you're uh, so right that when you say that they're leaving, you know, they, people do not want to make the decision for themselves. And this is a, a problem, what we see with the church. We have pastors in the church, priests in the church, and the people depend on the pastors to tell them what is in the Bible, or to tell them what to, right. to pray for, how to pray, or what to believe, when that is con I mean, completely opposite of what the Lord has taught us. And to see that, that the lack of uh, self-sustainability as it pertains to the, uh, the Bible and Christianity, that's scary and dangerous. It shows you how we have went from you know, a moral nation built on biblical principles to um, you know, Christianity being considered a threat by the Department of Homeland Security, and if you are anti-gay uh, marriage and anti-abortion, perceived as a, a bigot. Right. Right. Well, uh, Brother Joe, we're coming up um, towards the uh, first of the hour here, and um, I'm looking forward to having you back after a short break and continue on uh, doing what you're doing right now, exposing the darkness, being a good watchman, and being a, uh, a conveyor of truth, and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Right before we go into our first break. Oftentimes, not too well sometimes, you know, it's... Uh,
extremely late. Extremely late. I, I do apologize for that. So, um, you know, I have been, I have made plans. If you, if you want me to stay a little bit longer, I certainly can be on the appointed time. Well, well, we don't want to get any of you guys in trouble, um, you know, with, with the missus. So, uh, well, I just, <laughs> I just don't want to put you guys out in the doghouse. So. <laughs> that's, well, that's not an issue. Uh, no, no, no. During the last break, uh, I was out looking for Doug at the coffee shop, and I didn't run into him. So... <laughs> But yeah. I mean, that's one thing that I think that you and I have in common is we love our coffee. But again, it's so uh, humbling to have you on our show tonight. Uh, I never thought this in my wildest dreams would ever happen. But um, again, uh, you and uh, Joe played such a, a major role of inspiring me and uh, Curtis to take this step to be on the radio. And it's been so refreshing and rewarding for us because we've received an overwhelming response of prayer requests, uh, praise reports uh, from the states here and also you know from overseas so we, we've already you know got a broad base um, core of listeners and what excites me Doug and what excites me Joe is the fact is they want the truth and um, I, I'm so elated and so overwhelmed at the hunger and thirst of some people out there that simply want to know the Lord and want to know the truth and the truth about what's taking place in our country and everywhere that Curtis and I go we tell people about Doug and Joe Hagman about the Hagman and Hagman show being a premier news broadcast uh, unlike the other um, characters that call themselves newscasters out there really diligently doing you know a superb job of exposing darkness and bringing light uh, to people's minds that want to know the truth and uh, I made a comment earlier right before you came on you know you and Joe are exposing darkness and some people don't want darkness exposed because that makes them responsible then to deal with the truth and the light they'd rather stay in the dark but um, you bring such a challenge to people you give them something to uh, think upon something to meditate upon and you do such a superb job at that so we want to thank you again for being watchmen on the wall out there and doing the great job that you're doing now I've said enough uh, Doug you take us wherever you want to take us to tonight and uh, Joe the same with you my brother well, I, I, let me ask this how did um, uh, Joe do the first hour Joe do the first hour oh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> great. that first hour went so fast and, and he, he, he gave such uh, relevant uh, information that should make believers stand on their heels and take action and Doug I heard you say something a week ago I believe it was and it struck me very profoundly and, and, you, and you said it very passionately that we need to pray as believers prayer works uh, prayer is something that we need to do daily God answers our prayers but you said that we need to spend time after we have prayed and do something take action get something done and brother thank you for sharing that Doug oh, well thank you yeah I, I mean um, it, it's it's a multi-level assault that we have to wage against the enemy uh, certainly prayers is, is, is extremely important we have to um, also do what we can to educate others inform others bring other people into the loop as to what's going on um, we, it's it's amazing because I had um the multiple uh, calls uh, throughout, throughout the throughout night, the last night, night or last night. well, yeah, last night I guess it would be night, into this morning and then uh, uh, working on different uh, things on different uh, with respect to the with respect to the uh, well, in this case, with respect well, to what's case, going on with the banks, the dead bankers, the suicided bankers, suicided bankers, and. Um, that really has, was consuming me. Uh, or I, I really got consumed by that. And so yeah, you've been working hard on that. Yeah. And I didn't give out the website. Uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, the web, our website is homelandsecurityus.com. You can go there and read the latest article, uh, a report that my, my father had put up today. And I, had, I know I've done extensive, put extensive time in and research and, and time to get this information and get it out there. So Homeland Security Go and check out that latest article. Thanks, Thanks, Joe. And folks, if you visit homelandsecurityus.com, the latest article is going to link to CanadaFreePress.com, where you can share your your insights on on the discussion board there at the end of the article. Um, you can scroll all the way down, or you can leave a comment, depending on what you want to do. Uh, just a, either a comment or in the comment section, or enter into the discussion, which is a really ro a robust discussion, but that said, um, 
since uh, I've spoken with uh, Steve Quayle, a number of other individuals, um, uh, the, the girl economist, the girl economist, some other people some close other to people close um, to um, JP Morgan, JP Morgan that um, had known that I was coming out with this article. They offered some information. They offered some information. The bottom line right now, I see. I see. Is that we are, is uh, that we are we're really uh, at the precipice really of the precipice a major, a major, a major shift or a major shift event or a major taking event place economically. economically. And the window being April nineteenth through the through the May first through the May first time period. The, uh, when I say a window, when I say a window, it's window, not with any degree of certainty degree whatsoever. Of certainty it's just a time period to watch out for. And that happens to correspond with the the occult. Um, holiday, uh, holiday, uh, um, uh, uh, Marcus, I heard you mention Marcus, about you the mention people who are involved in the occult. We've got a bunch of Luciferians that are running the banking system, they're running the government, they're running the government, they're running the it's everything. And um, uh, they want to, well, not they don't want to, they're in the process of taking everything that we've worked for all of our lives. And taking it away from us, it away from and us. it's and a wholesale it's a slaughter, wholesale ultimately, slaughter ultimately of the middle class. Of the middle class. This is what they're is doing what now. They're I've, doing I've gone to different I've forums and websites, and I've seen the comments saying, "Well, the 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 boo hoo for the bankers." Boo hoo for well, the bankers. Well, I understand that sentiment, understand but what we're looking at here, in this case, are people. Are people? First of all, they're people. First of all, they're people. Plain and simple, and is their flesh and blood. They've got families. They've got families, and um, and um, they are they are they most likely most likely, the majority of them. The majority had information had stumbled upon information, or were given information, or were given that could have threatened that could have threatened the entire the entire agenda, agenda of the the bankers. The, one thing the bankers don't want the is don't want. the premature, the premature trigger pull on what they're about to do. Yeah, during this live yeah, yeah, um, I was talking about the New World Religious Order and the New World Economic Order, but one thing I didn't really get into is the economic part of this. And uh, through some research I've done today, I talked to you about that I'll be sending you. They have. I mean, we, this is not by chance that we are in this, you know, devastated state uh, of, compared to where we used to. It's not by chance that we are being plundered and uh, having our wealth, whether it's through jobs or savings, taken from us. This is the order out of chaos uh, in the economic world that has been set up by design in order to break us down, to build up this, to build us back up as a one world uh, international new world order. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Uh, sorry about the yeah. delay there. Uh, you know, delay yeah, there. this is all by design, and when right now we are headed into this economic abyss. Uh, trust me when I say this. Trust me when I say this. And I'm talking to Steve Quell, who uh, this morning, early this morning, once again, um, last night, the early yesterday morning, uh, a couple of more people with a couple of more bankers that have not yet made the uh, news. Have been well, have been taking taken away in hearses uh, or in corner wagons, and in one when, as a matter of fact, the corner had not left the house, and I was talking with Steve, and he was talking with the guy that was, uh, was watching all of this play out, and uh, following behind the corner's wagon were two black SUVs. Um, I, I know the man's name, I know exactly the address, and I, did, I would get secondary confirmation of exactly what he was saying. So we're looking at a global game plan here, and it's uh, really starting in, in the U.S. and London, or taking place in, in, that, uh, in that area. Um, you know, this is a very, and I don't want to understate what's going on here, nor do I want to overstate what's going on. I, I'm not sure if I can, but... Um, there, there needs to be a, 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 a dramatic awakening. Um, I had a meeting earlier today with a, a couple of people and just didn't get it. Just did not get the magnitude of what was taking place. Uh, now I have 
are involved in a we are involved in a in, in, in a purge in a, not only of the military, only of the military but of the banks but of the no banks. things yet no things yet. But, and, and Dan, let me tell you this from a UN publication I, I have here. They talk about this is a, one of the subtitles is the ultimate choice, and the sentence following reads this. While the united religion and the global ethic appear to be on the surface harmless enough, in reality, this is the beginning of the end. It will be forced, people will be forced to make an ultimate decision between Jesus or Lucifer. Um, and it goes on to say, uh, the UN has the authority uh, to wield more and more, it is growing, and it, it will be forced to pledge allegiance to the, people will be forced to pledge allegiance to the United Nations, and is now forming world religion. If they refuse, they will be boycotted by the cashless society of the new world order. They will not be permitted to buy or sell. And, it, and there's a lot more that's pertaining to the economy here, but, uh, well, you, you know, they are, just, it, you know, just just talked about the, uh, it's very true. Away from the middle class, because we're going to talk about the technocratic dictatorship that will rule the world. This is what we're seeing the uh, beginnings of. And if you uh, if you study history, there's a uh, Dr. Dennis Cuddy, who's one of the world's foremost experts on the New World Order. In 1973, he wrote a memo describing the means for social control over world population by deliberate economic and political destabilization. So that. Uh, later the dead leash uh, could be used to strangle used to this rebellious strangle. nation, which means the United States, the United uh, States. Uh, into submission uh, to into global governance. And, and this has been really and the standard operating procedure of the Illuminati since they established global uh, control through their international banking system. And, and don't forget, that controls all of the central banks, the Federal Reserve Banks, the IMF, the World Bank. And the international bank is the CFR, Charlie Commission, Brzezinski. And, and, and don't forget, when we say Brzezinski, I mean, to turn on MSNBC, Morning Joe, who's on there, well, Brzezinski's daughter, as an aside, I suppose. Um, so folks, you don't think the media is controlled? Of course it's controlled. Of course. Uh, by the very people, by the trilaterals and the CFR. But. Yeah, these are the internationalists that support the UN, like the Universal Declaration of Human Rights submitted by the United Nations that talks about sustainable uh, economic responsibility and talks about the economic system will uh, need to be redistributed to be a fair and equal manner. Uh, there's tremendous gaps between the rich and the poor nations. And it's no coincidence that wealth redistribution is the central plank in communism. And uh, it talks about when the Pope and the Gorbachev agree, Gorbachev uh, agree, and it gets into a, a, a document that was published by the Pope, but when, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and, and, and uh, gentlemen, just stop me if I don't want to, I don't want to dominate here, but, um, yeah, we, you're exactly right, Joe, and, and also, you know, people think that this is a Democrat Republican right left thing, and it's not, but there's been shattered long ago, as a matter of fact, if you look at that, we understand that Obama brought in, uh, more debt in his years in the Oval Office and other presidents have uh, combined. Yet it's it's with the approval of Congress. And what, what do we see? We see Congress really. We see Congress really objecting to this. No, of course not. So what we're looking at is this complete subjugation of our executive and legislative and judicial branch uh, to the globalists. Brzezinski and uh, the globalists have intentionally and are intentionally helping to destabilize our economy. We're, we're seeing a devaluation of the dollar like never before, the exportation of uh, various goods, um, uh, the terror, I'm sorry, uh, well, goods, or, uh, uh, I should say labor, not goods, uh, overseas. You've got, uh, you've got, uh, you've got no oil exploration here in the United States, or at least nothing of value. And uh, this is really the plan of the globalists. You got Brzezinski and other world government uh, advocates. They're using, and, and see, this is, and, and Black Marcus and Curtis, that you're here because they're using many of the evangelical leaders to promote this coming one world religion. And behind this, you know, and, and it's, it's really. It's really nefarious, it's really sinister, because behind the scenes, the globalists, along with the, um, the uh, these emergent uh, churches, they're working hand-in-hand hand with Islam to establish Islam, or a watered-down version of Islam, which is most 
incompatible with the socialism and communism as a global religion. As a global religion. So, and if you look back in history, just do a search on the internet, you'll see photographs of Brzezinski, for example, working with Bin Laden during the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. Now, some people will write that off and say, well, yeah, that was then, this is now. Well, you've got a lot of that. You've got a lot of that was then, this is now. Events. That being one of them. None of this, in the meeting I had today, which actually caused my, attributed my tardiness here, is, there's this disconnect, mental disconnect between people. They're not getting the magnitude of the lie in the article that the report, it's almost, I think it's pretty close to a 4,000 word expose. And it's only really half the story. I'm going to be doing more. But you've got right now, and, and people really need to understand this, you've got the banks now working with the CIA, and even, perhaps even worse, if that's possible. Yeah, you found something yesterday that we reported on. You, we talked about this on our show. And through research, I don't know how you came across this, but Brother Marcus and Curtis, uh, my dad told me about this. I was, I was so surprised that uh, in New York, working with the NYPD, like they have, a, they have J.P. Morgan has a spot with the authorities, the legal authorities, whether it's DHS or the NYPD, and control, you know, basically, law enforcement, you have the ability to see the cameras, get the database information. We're talking about a bank here having the ability and the information uh, capabilities of law enforcement, working with law enforcement to make sure that to make you know, sure that they have what information they need for whatever reason they they need it. They need it. Exactly. And that's not surprising. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it really is. It's really not surprising about the things that are going on. I mean, you you got all these institutions, all these things in bed with each other. So yeah, uh, don't be surprised if you start seeing you know things uh, people that aren't necessarily you know doing like say for a perfect example, the banks you know using the using the police forces abilities to monitor and watch people. You know, they're all in bed together. So don't don't be surprised if you start seeing more of this coming out in the open. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Something that you had mentioned too, Brother Doug and Brother Joe, was the fact that um, there might be a move towards the postal offices uh, becoming uh, banks. Uh, do I understand that correctly? Do I understand that correctly? Yes. Yes, I think Elizabeth Warren. I think Elizabeth Joe was Elizabeth Warren. Came out one of the, uh, well, uh, more than one, but yeah, the. Uh, the, Joe, uh, take that question. Go ahead. Joe, take that question. Go ahead. You were you were working on yeah, that. You have, you, a, you have more information than I do about the the uh, names and such. But the post office, uh, from what you told me, is going to start uh, cashing. You know, giving cash advances uh, like the uh, paycheck payday paycheck places. They did. Barack Obama had a minimum wage uh, executive order recently this week, and it is a ten dollar ten cents executive order to make minimum federal minimum wage ten dollars and ten cents an hour. Now this. I believe is in direct correlation with what they're doing at the post office as they're changing it into a financial institution as they lost, they reportedly lost a bunch of money and have been losing money um, for whatever reason. So they're going, and people have been receiving literature. A friend of mine said that they received a mailer uh, that talked about how the post office was, was going to be reconfigured and did not mail, but also part of a bank, it's going to be, have a banking system, and we could see this as, you know, a push to, you know, get rid of different types of banks, so, you know, we have local banks here, and then you have your big mega banks like JP Morgan and such, but this could be a push to, uh, you know, do away with the banking system as we know it, and uh, what are the dark, man, one of the dark reasons behind this, what is the real purpose for this, I have not yet found, nor do I know the extent of how they're going to change, but uh, it's very odd to see all this happening with the post office. Well, the gentleman does don't forget, uh, uh, don't forget, uh, sometime, it was early in the 1900s, um, sometime between like 19 and 1911 through the mid-60s, there was a postal savings system that was signed into law, it was by Taft, and it was operated by the United States.
Defense Marshal Marshal Service. Service. And I do recall in in my young age, uh, during that time, uh, uh, knowing that uh, that you could go in and make a deposit of 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 some type. Now, it's it's my understanding there were just essentially savings accounts. It wasn't a a banking system. And and there was a limit to what you could put in there. Um, Um, But the other thing, too, um, there was... uh, there were uh, uh, sometime during that period, I think early on during the period, early on during depositors period, with the depositors uh, postal with savings postal accounts savings were fingerprinted. Account were fingerprinted. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, okay. if you think about that, if you think and about it, that, just and think just that, that that's just that one more way of, of way keeping of track. I mean, people track. talk about the ammo purchases. The ammo yeah. Purchases. yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just, yeah. well, like you said last night, that is, it might be, you know, all these ammo purchases by all these different agencies might be for one agency, but we see the IRS, the uh, DHS, EPA, all these different government agencies making big bulk ammo purchases, and that has, is a major concern. I mean, why would, why would they be doing Why would they be doing Well, that's true. Well, I, I was also I was curious about also the fact that, and I'm not prepared to address this myself to tonight, but the fact that there has been talk concerning uh, some of the postal offices um, building and constructing uh, other types of rooms, whether it be on ground or underground. And I thought that was interesting also, so there's definitely something well, going on in the bigger picture. Definitely. Um, I'd just like to jump in real quick. Um, this was this was something that just came back to my mind. Uh, like what a couple of days ago, we were I was at the post office, and uh, you know we know the lady that actually works at the post office, and um, I overheard a conversation. Basically, uh, one of the people that called in asked her, "Do you guys cash checks here?" And she was looking at that caller like, "What? No, we're we're a post office. Why would we cash checks?" And you know, at first I was thinking, you know, maybe they were referring to money order. But no, she was actually talking about government issue checks. And, you know, I just thought that was a simple mistake. And this is the first time I'm hearing of this. So this is like, I'm sitting here with my jaw dropped, my eyes wide open, bugging out on this. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. It's, um, well, I remember one time uh, going into a savings and loan and asking if they if they were ever going to, were going to uh, have checking accounts. And, 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 Thanks. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. 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 
acting as insurance companies, insurance companies acting as banks, banks having derivatives, uh, creating these, these exotic packages, and this is just grand theft of the people on deposit. So, none of this is good, and, and this is just one more way to expedite the process of theft from the middle class. Now, Doug, you mentioned a time frame earlier, and I know that both of us are, you know, conscientious in our belief, and, and we don't believe in date setting, but we know uh, times and seasons. And you make reference to um, a, a, a time frame earlier uh, in respect to April um, into May, I believe it was. Was that not correct? Uh, that's correct. Um, and uh, I, I just wanted to add this comment. Um, now, I, I know this is going to sound like a plug. I can hear people thinking of it already. But um, we did not just pick those dates for our spiritual warfare conference out of the air. Uh, I sought the Lord and was praying for the time frame. And it happens to start on the 30th of April. And it goes through the 1st of May into the 4th. Into the fourth. And what I want the listeners and to be aware of tonight is that May the 1st May the is, a is a significant day and day time frame. And, time frame. And, and people who have an understanding of spiritual things know that there are certain uh, spiritual entities that use certain days of the year for their uh, nefarious purposes. And May the 1st happens to be one of those days. And so um, when the Lord got that time frame into my heart, it was after I had already announced that, that he brought to my attention why that it was going to cover and go through May the 1st. And what we believe is going to happen, we've got people booked uh, to come here from Rhode Island all the way over to the West Coast. And we're believing that God is going to send people uh, not for a vacation, but for an occupation. We are going to occupy spiritually some things resident on this reservation, but also address in the spirit realm some things that need to be dealt with. But I do believe that Brother Doug and Brother Joe, that May the 1st of this year, is going to be, and again, please understand me, listeners, I'm not setting a date, I'm giving you a time frame that I believe has spiritual applications. Now, um, Brother Doug, you've done a lot of excellent research on bloodlines and uh, connections to dates and stuff like that. Would you like to just maybe just jump in there and address that tonight? Well, sure. And one of the things that we have to understand is um, it's not... And, and I say this all the time. It doesn't matter what we, you and I, believe as Christians. It doesn't matter what the um, anti-Christians believe, um, the, the satanic Luciferians, what they believe. You've got right now, uh, or during a time period, between April 19th and the 25th, it's, um, it's really a sacrificial preparation. Uh, it involves kidnapping and the, the holding uh, the ceremonial, the ceremonial uh, the preparations for, preparations for uh, persons for human sacrifice, for human sacrifice. And, that sounds pretty, and that sounds pretty pretty bizarre, pretty bizarre. but if you look and, and, and I think statistics and, and, I, and I try to do this a little bit um, it, the, 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 the figures the, this is a little bit fuzzy but it's the uh, uniform crime statistics that are published by the FBI and if you look at the, the and, 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 and folks can do this on their own if you look at when the when the, the greater number of children do go missing um, it, it's, there are peaks and valleys to those statistics and one of the, the, the peaks seems to be and it seems to be even more even, even greater of late is that April 19th the last week of April um, and the and the occultists, the Luciferians, are interested in sacrificing children. The smarter, the brighter, the smarter, the better. And you know, really, uh, you've got the the Muir ritual, the grand climax of the uh, satanic sacrificial preparation on the twenty fifth. There are sex rituals, sex sacrificing of a a young woman or a young girl on the 25th and then as we enter into the period of the 30th to the 1st of May you've got the the Walpurgis night the, the Belgian one of the most important nights on the satanic calendar where blood, blood rituals and human sacrifice take place so this is incredible this is incredible absolutely incredible 
absolutely. Great. And yeah, um, matter of fact, um, I just I was reading this book uh, called "Paint to Send the Captive Free," and um, a lot of what I read on there, brothers, um, my jaw dropped because you know it did relate to specific times, specific dates, like uh, the Black Sabbath, where their the Black Sabbath, where they literally look forward to that all times of the year throughout the whole year, and look forward to that one event. There's other events throughout the year, but um, the way that they orchestrated this. It, it was just crazy because while I read, while I read things, I paint uh, uh, images are painted in my mind. Um, but basically, what they do, what these satanic, uh, what these uh, Luciferians actually do, is they set up shrines and altars to Lucifer himself in each strategic place. Um, now, mind you, that you know Lucifer isn't isn't somebody that can be omnipresent, meaning you know uh, everywhere at once. And they have timed this. They they clearly got the down to the science. Where they can time it to where you know they they take these sacrifices point you know basically in unison um, to where basically their God Lucifer is showing up at, at the exact time of the of this and. Brothers and sisters, there's a lot more that goes on than just, you know, uh, sacrificing. I mean, you're very right, brother. Uh, I'm talking about very, uh, various <laughs> things. Of, uh, I feel weird saying this, but uh, sex, you know, with demons and uh, each other and just just blaspheming, you know, the name of God. Um, in that book, it describes some of the things that they actually did to those people that they sacrificed. I'm not about that between one of them. Reenacting the, uh, the crucifixion of Christ. Right. And, you know, defecating on their bodies, literally, uh, uh, basically necrophiliacs, uh, if you guys are familiar with that term, um, you know, they do all these hurt, they do these bodies on, on these holy days, uh, well, unholy days for them. Um, so I, I have a little bit of understanding and knowledge about the things that, you know, they actually do during this um, period of time frame. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, it, it just, it, it makes my skin crawl and it makes me angry. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, <laughs> So you, you know what, uh, Curtis, you're exactly right, and, and uh, Marcus and, and Joe and Curtis, uh, well, I'll say this, if, if people who are familiar with the Franklin cover-up, and that's where Larry King was, the, the uh, well, not, not Larry King of, of uh, television fame, but Larry King of the Republican National Convention fame, uh, Omaha Savings and Loan, or Franklin Savings and Loan in Omaha, uh, if you read the account, if you read the investigation of Senator John DeCamp, and it would see really what was taking place. I mean, you're talking about some pretty sick stuff that I won't even get into. Um, but then now, um, it, we're talking about a group of people here who will think nothing of, of beating uh, children at, at to death and sacrificing them and having sex with them and making them have sex with others. And, uh, I mean, the most horrific, horrific thing of uh, did take place uh, during that period of time in the 1980s. Now, that, that said, um, there is an occult significance, perhaps not directly tied to the um, to that uh, uh, aspect of to the Franklin cover-up, but it is is um, certainly they they look like they ripped the page out of page out of the occult. Uh, aspect of things, and, and don't forget too what we saw. Um, and, and this is what uh, Joe Nathan Leal talked about, and, and we, we've talked about this maple celebration that was shown in the Olympics. And you know what is that? Well, the, the maple celebration is the celebration of the children. Um, okay, and I don't want to be graphic, but they're gathered around a wooden pole with ribbons, and that they're going ribbons. The wooden pole is, is, is to signify a phallic symbol, and the ribbons are different colors representing uh, uh, certain things, and the boys go one way, the girls go the other way, and they're celebrating this, this whole... Well, they're celebrating, and the reason they're celebrating, uh, which you're told, and, and the actual reason are two different things. The reason they're celebrating is for the fact that they were not selected for the sacrifice, and they get to live another year. And we saw this played out in the opening ceremony for the 2012 Olympics. We saw references to this in the Super Bowl ads. And we know that Satan doesn't have an original body. He's a, he's a master counterfeiter. Well, right. Well, this is what, uh, this is what the, and, the, and we also know and we also that the Satanists have to tell us what they're going to do in advance. We're seeing this being, this is being played out before a 
live audience across the world and people are looking at this and clapping and saying, oh boy, oh yeah, this is, you know, what a nice celebration. Not, not having the slightest clue of what's behind this, the, the Illuminati power structure, the Freemasonry, the U.S. Um, in Britain and the British flag. And, um, this is what this is all about. This is, what this is, all about. Uh, this is has nothing to do with any type of legitimate uh, entertainment or anything like that. Um, and you've got these polls. It's again a record router about the first day of May with the festivities lasting throughout the month. In particular, on May Day, but I should say April, and then May Day uh, being celebrated. But the, the May, you know, the May poll again, modern day. Rule, ancient uh, valley symbol uh, is meant to represent the male. Meant to represent the male. Gender of powers. Gender of powers. Um, and it, it, really, it's it's an idol. Really, it's it's an idol to the god of fertility. So we're seeing. So and, and, and this goes to you know, people think I'm not. If you if you look at the Washington Monument, the obelisk all across the, the world, from St. Peter's to Washington D.C., this is what this is all about. This is what this is all about. It's it's about it's, it's the about kings who had once ruled the world. The world. These are about the, the Babylonian, the or the ancient uh, uh, pagan kings. Pagan and uh, uh, it's right in our faces. And that's the thing. It's right in front of our noses. And people, yes, people, you, you, you cannot. You cannot. It's a very difficult task to get people out of their their um, mindset. Say, well, this is just a, well, oh, it's just a monument. Yeah, it just happens to be yeah, happens what, 555 be feet. If you look at the cult numerology, and you start you start seeing you start things, seeing how things are, are all laid out. Are then, laid out. It, it's in your face. And, and here's the other thing: they're laughing at us. These people that are behind us, behind all of this, are laughing at us. They're, they're laughing at us because we're not getting it. Because we're not getting it. Exactly. Because I think one thing that the darkness has always done well is having um, plans. And one of the plans that has always worked so well, I believe, Doug and Joe, was the uh, ability to hide things in plain sight. And I think it's so prevalent. So prevalent. And he, as sick as all these things are, and they are, these um, gatherings and sacrifices and child sex abuse and all these things are so graphic and, and horrible. And horrible. Yet, what 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 is it that the People are disconnected. They 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 don't recognize it. They don't see that. I'd like you to and Joe answer that. You know, if you could. And, you know, I'm sure there's more than one reason. But what do you think was one of the most dominant reasons that people just don't get it? People just when it's in their face. When it's in their face. Well, I'll tell you what, let me just give you two seconds, I'll turn over and jump. Uh, the biggest reason, I think, is the revision of the history books, the lack of, or in the, um, the creation of things like television, and um, the people who are in power in positions of entertainment, in positions of information, the media in particular, they are revising history, and they are keeping the truth from the American public. That's, I believe that's one of the biggest things of late. It's been a bunch of, a bunch of, sorry, but a bunch of idiots walking around, a bunch of zombies walking around with their faces and these stupid, uh, whatever they're called, iPhones. And, uh, you know, I, today, I, I was at a location for, for a particular meeting. I did not see one person under 25, I would say, that didn't have their face buried in one of these things. Like, I could have. I, I could have I ran through the location I, I was at, you know, with on clothes, and no one would have noticed because they're so big, you know, so into their iPhones. Well, and, and uh, Joe, before you, you know, give your take on that, I'd, I'd like to share something with you, uh, Doug, that I shared with uh, Joel early in the program. Uh, it was a term that I came across called I-dosing. Uh, it's the letter I dash the word dosing, D-O-S-I-N-G. And basically, again, what that is, it's, um, it's a spiritual tactic to where um, through modern technology, um, those who uh, are teenagers become literally like high in a digital way, an electronic way, by playing specific internet videos uh, through these headphones. And these headphones have the ability that through repetitive, repetitive tones, uh, they create uh, certain types of beats. And basically what 
clinical studies have shown is that these repetitive beats they produce particular uh, brain waves and what happens is the result is there appears to be voices that come from the center of people's heads when they listen these through these repetitive uh, tones to the headphones so we're being digitally manipulated um, drug high on technology and like you said you know everywhere you go you see someone uh, manifesting an addiction to modern technology and this is not by accident this is by design would, would you agree with that Doug? would you agree with that Doug? absolutely and, and I know Joe's done a lot of work on that the research of that but yes absolutely yes absolutely um, uh, all of this. As a matter of fact, I, I did uh, a good friend of mine is uh, an attorney out of Florida who uh, wrote a book about the video game industry. And um, I've got his book, a studio here somewhere. Uh, that said, um, in, in fact, this attorney was disbarred. He was uh, made to take a psychiatric evaluation. Found to be sane. In fact, he's the sanest, uh, the only sane attorney, or the only attorney in Florida that has been um, verified as sane. But he wrote a book about the video game industry, about how they are turning the players, the, the children, into a group of uh, zombies, into a group of, um, of uh, subjects, you know, and, and uh, violent ones at that. Uh, desensitizing uh, them to, to all of this. So, um, having said that, yeah, it, it's, it's, yes, yes. A few things, a few things are the reason they're playing into this, uh, what we're seeing. Social engineering, for one. The shaping of cognitive thought. People don't have this, you know, people who are, people who are, Rooted in, in Jesus are not uh, victims of social engineering because they have their foundations, they have their, their precepts from the, the word of the Lord. Those are far and few between. So these other people, the rest of the people, are, are not rooted in anything. They have no convictions. They have no uh, core beliefs. And so at this time, we have uh, a bunch of people who are open to ideas that may, I mean, the way things are taught and told, it, they make them sound so good no matter, you, know, you could be talking about abortion, and they say, you know, women's health reproductive rights. Um, the psychological manipulation of people because of their lack of confidence, their lack of, of uh, foundation in Christ is one of the main reasons for uh, what we see today. And people will comply. They will conform. They will toss out. Anybody who's not rooted in Christ will toss out Christianity in a heartbeat for whatever system they tell you to be a part of. To be a part of. Well, and let me be quick to say, I think that you and, um, that you and uh, Brother Doug both Brother Doug answered that Doug question answered that. in a very, uh, in a very good, way uh, good way, because what you have done, you brought a natural component a natural and a spiritual component together, and there's a strong and correlation between the natural and spiritual realms. And the rewriting of history, I mean, if, 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 if I had time uh, to express the... Uh, the righteous anger righteous that rises up in me when I see that the atrocities of the Native Americans have, have been, you know, covered up to a great degree, and, and history has been rewritten. Even some of the spiritual experiences that major Native uh, American Indians had, leaders and chiefs in particular, have been wiped out of history. And, and things would be different if, if the truth was known. And whether it be our country or cultural groups across the world, like Doug, you said, when history is rewritten, we are robbed. And there's a thief called Satan, who is the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's one way he destroys and kills and robs us, is by taking away the truth of a history or the truth of a culture. And then, Joe, like you said, you know, uh, so aptly is that people who are not founded and grounded in the Lord, they're a walking target. Their minds, their souls are open to lies, to deceptions, to philosophies and traditions and men. So, you know, thank you for answering that so well and so astutely.
actually both of you because you brought the natural and spiritual components together. If I can just throw in something kind of from the luck field here. If um, people are familiar with Dr. John Coleman, he is from the Committee of 300. Um, he's a former MI6 officer, and you know, we, we often ask how we got here. We have to take a look at certain, certain hard cold facts. Um, uh, Coleman has talked, for example, about the generation of the 60s and the Beatles in particular. I wonder how many people understand the Beatles, the group of the Beatles, and, and, and I might get a lot of emails now about this because, yeah. but anyway, they were actually a psychological operation that, that was ran backed by the Tavistock Institute for Human Relations. If people don't know what the Tavistock Institute is, of course, um, it was a group formed by Oxford University, right, Oxford in London, uh, by the Royal Institute of International Affairs back in 1922. Now, you've got to understand what the Royal Institute of International Affairs was, but that's off the point. But if we look at this, the Beatles were actually created to advance the formation of a corrupted new world, the New World Order style slave populace. And, um, um, you know, it was all about free love, drugs, rock music, uh, and everything was replaced. Christian Christianity and the Illuminati introduced this new age movement, this new age spiritual doctrines that don't require the average person to follow the moral law. So what do we have today? You've got the generation of the 60s um, who are morally bankrupt, that are not only running things, but that are raising their children and, and helping raising their grandchildren from that, that generation. And people might say, oh, that's people. Well, you're, full, you're an idiot. I mean, you're not that. No, you're right. But think about this: even atheist, uh, secular people, when they, what the new world order, one world religion system is going to push is world peace. And who doesn't want to see world peace? At the same time, we're told that from the scripture that there is no peace while we're on this earth, and that we're told about the peace that's trying, that will be initiated, that is not peace. And but you know, good people, they don't want war, so. So just without having the back knowledge of the scriptures and the war between good and evil and, and what we transpire here, you could easily fall into the trap of, yes, we, I want peace, I'll go for this new world order. Uh, so it's easy to see how people will fall into this. And Brother Marcus, I got an email here uh, from a listener, and they would like you, uh, they would like to know if you would be able to give your opinion on the return of the Wyoming land to the Wind River Reservation at some point during the show. So just don't need to pass that along. Okay, um, yeah, let, let's, let's try that. We're coming up on um, the time again here. Um, Brother Curtis, um, I want to have you, if you would, to uh, have you and Jose take us into a break here. Now, Doug and Joe, you're welcome to stay with us uh, in this next hour as long as you feel you can. Uh, and if not, that's, that's fine. I understand that. But um, I, I just... So appreciate the um, wealth of information that you bring forth, both of you, uh, to our listeners, to your listeners. Um, you, you're very diligent, uh, and I, I thank you for that. And again, not just bringing forth you know, the current events, but then putting them in a biblical perspective. And God bless you for that. So my, my brothers in the Lord, um, if you would like to you know, stay with us in the next hour, please go free as long as you can I want to and if you want to just um, you know comment on that real quick um, uh, it's, uh, okay if, if you don't mind I just want to talk a little bit more uh, because I think that this is important to understand how we how we've got to where we're at I think that we have to look at the, um, I didn't mention the Beatles and stuff and, uh, you know it's it's really difficult for people to believe and in fact it took me a long time to believe what was going on or what uh, what we saw with respect to the Beatles, the occult references, and the Beatles work. Uh, of course, it showed the Illuminati signs. They were puppets of the Illuminati. In fact, there's a, uh, I believe there is a promotional photograph for the Yellow Submarine album, which shows John Lennon flashing his double horns and McCarty making the Eye of Horus sign. And it would be like a... Um, it would be like um, a, just like you know, giving some of the okay sign, that type of thing. Um, the front type of thing. cover of the White uh, Album, or I'm um, no, not the White Album, but, but the Beatles, with the Beatles, with the Beatles. 
doesn't have a shadow. This is the one eye of Horus. Uh, and of course, the signs are all over the place. Now, people say, well, that's just the people say, well, that's crap. That's just that's Hollywood. Well, hey, Dad, you're kind of out a little bit, at least on my end. Oh, I am? I, I heard it a little bit. I'm not sorry, sure about Curtis. That. Did you hear that? I'm not sorry, sure Curtis. Did you hear that? I mean, yeah. I'm uh, it's very possible that uh, yeah, there's some lag. Yeah, I heard that just a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, okay. I thought it was my phone, tell you the truth. <laughs> I thought it was something going on on my end, so I was like, ah! <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's interesting. You guys have a, uh, have a good audience here. I already got the email about this. Um, just to remind people, the, the songs, some of the Beatles songs featuring the occult lyrics, I mean, you know, it's just one, for example, Lucy and the Scout of Diamonds, it's a reference to Lucifer, the sky with diamonds and the stars, the dogs are serious representing Lucifer. I mean, uh, it, it's blatant, but not for the uninitiated. So, uh, it, to try to get everyone initiated, why is this important? Because this does trace back to the Tavistock Institute, and the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations is perhaps one of the most uh, incredible organizations, not in a good way, but in a horrific way, that uh, was ever created, and it's, of course, the father of the Tavistock Bill, no, uh, Sigmund Freud, and uh, that should explain a lot. Um, the, 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 you've got this change in, in morality through psychology, and of course, this is how we got where we are today. Um, and and uh, in no small measure, where we look at Kissinger, for example, where was what's, what's the story about Kissinger? What's the story about Kissinger? You know, how did he? Um, uh, how did he come to come into play? And of course, Kissinger was a product of the Tavistock Institute. It, it, it's it, the ideology, the ideology of American foundations was created really by the Tavistock Institute. So I would urge everyone to get as familiar as possible. If you're if you're interested in how we got here and what the enemy's playbook is, please study that. That's uh, um, because that really developed the mass brainwashing techniques which are being used today uh, when they were used experimentally on American prisoners of war in Korea. Remember the movie Korea? Remember the Venture Candidate? Well, that was based on Tavistock Institute uh, influence, or that had Tavistock Institute the influence. And uh, uh, there were experiments in crowd control methods that have been widely used on the American public even today. Surreptitiously, but nonetheless uh, outrageous in terms of the assault on human freedom. This is so important um, that, that we understand this and we understand who was involved. I mean, uh, look at Roosevelt. And, and, you know, we, we talked too about the signs and symbols in the back of the dollar bill. Well, the, the very people who were involved in all of this hocus pocus. Are, are the very people in power, the very people who are who are advancing this type of technology. Sorry if I drummed on. Perhaps uh, uh, I, I can stop here, but I, I think it's important for people to understand exactly what's going on and, and how they, the, the birth of other secret groups like the Trilateral Commission and the Club of Rome and so on, how they came to be. So that's the kind of the background and uh, how it how yeah, it uh, generated and yeah, bubbled into pop generated. culture in the 60s and, 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 and also <laughs> incredibly and people are going to think I'm nuts but if you get into that 60s era you can even see about the Beach Boys and, and, and the overlap in Charles Manson and the um, the uh, uh, the, uh, and of course that explains a lot with respect to speaking from and, and assassination of Joe Ford. I mean, there are so many connections that it would take days in, in a program like this to lay out. Well, um, Doug, I believe that what you're describing in, in a sense is uh, deception by design. And... Uh, Unless we understand Unless the history understand of where we came from, we, came we won't from understand where we're headed to in the future in relativity to you know, Bible prophecy. And I think you do a very outstanding job, you and Joe Bolt, by you know, laying the framework of becoming Antichrist system. What 
we're going to be subjected to, uh, the deceit, the deception, the enslavement. And again, um, we need to be aware of the schemes and tactics. The Bible says, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. And I, I feel sorry for people that would just as soon remain ignorant than be awakened. But thank God that you are out there uh, bringing people to a point of decision. Choosing between deception or truth, and uh, your research uh, is just impeccable. Uh, both of you spend, I don't know, many hours in studious work, uh, looking, referencing, searching uh, to make uh, us enlightened and aware of what has happened, what is happening, and yet what will happen. And uh, I just want to thank you for that. Well, thank you for recognizing that. Well, I appreciate that. You do it on the front lines. I'm you and Chris on the front lines. And, you know, I just don't understand how people can go outside of the country on missions on missionary work when inside the country we've got such problems like you deal with every day. Well, I had the opportunity to go out. I'm sorry, Joe, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just want to say this, you know, yeah, you, you guys and what you do, uh, all the, the time and effort you put into uh, making sure the people that are around you in your town are, are uh, taken care of, that, that you're out there, you know, really working to help people. And then you come here and you're doing a radio show to really uh, working to help people. I mean, we look at the dedication of these global planners and, and their passion and reverence for their pushing of this uh, initiative of a one world Religion. It makes what most Christians and churches do look like a hobby or a non-existent thing. If we had half the dedication as uh, these Satanists do to push this agenda through, it's just the same dedication and, and effort uh, that Christians, if they had the same dedication and effort, we would be a supernatural church. You know, spiritual power of being able to combat this at every level. But that's not there. And exactly. It's sad to say, but it's not. And um, that's why it is. It's awesome when you do have uh, a show like yours or uh, Pastor Paul Begley or Rick Wells or whoever it is that is really without an agenda just wanting to preach the word of God and truth to people. Well, I mean, certainly that's my heart and Chris's heart we want to preach nothing but the truth whole truth nothing but the truth as they say and one thing that we've always and I've mentioned this before but I've got to say it again to the glory of God anytime that we are out here sharing teaching preaching praying uh, or ministering to people we always ask that the presence of the Holy Spirit goes before us and uh, Doug and Joe I think that you can attest when we've been guests on your show and on our show we've always got you know excellent feedback about not not just the word that we share, but the presence of God behind it. And without His presence, nothing we do is is, is worth it. Uh, our, our works in ourselves is you know totally you know hay and stubble. But when His presence comes, when His presence goes before us, He prepares a way to touch the people because the Lord definitely is. Uh, a loving father who loves his people and you know if people would sometimes just know the hours and I, I know this is going to sound like I'm patting myself on the back but all I can say is this is Brother Curtis and myself we're out there every day uh, reaching people touching people praying for people helping people and the only way we can do that is by people who pray for us um, I have to say I've got some of the best prayer partners out there that I've ever seen uh, we're building relationships with them, they're, they're praying for us incessantly. Uh, they're, they're helping us. They're sending stuff to us. They're sending support. And anything that we can do only comes by the grace of God working through other people. And um, so, you know, to just know that we're not out there on a Sunday morning for half an hour giving a 30-minute lecture, but we're out there. You know, sometimes it feels like 24/7. Uh, it, 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 the hours that we would put into a day extend into the night season sometimes. I'm up sometimes late, you know, answering mail, praying for people, just praying for their needs. And um, we, we, we've gotten, you know, so much of a positive feedback is that we know the Lord has blessed us and it's His favor upon us. Nothing of ourselves or ourselves that we can do except by His grace and favor. But um, we, we are out there and we are diligently on the front lines every day of the week. I mean, I'll just give you one example. Um, we, we, we went to uh, a little place called Kyle just, just the other day, a few days ago, and thank God the weather is lifting here. Uh, we've actually got into some 40 degree temperatures, thank God, after a major season of extended freeze. 
and uh, people were hurting, um, you know, um, needing firewood, needing gas, needing this, needing that. And just one morning alone, we, we just, I think, four families it was, Brother Curtis and I were confronted, and we literally just handed out almost $800, you know, on the spot. Now, because we can't do that every day. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this, is that the people who have helped us, you're not helping us. You're helping the people that we serve. You're helping the people that we meet every day out here. And for those who are going to come out, you will see firsthand the, uh, uh, not statistics, but the real life situations the people have lived on this reservation. And not just this reservation. And, and you know one, I think there's only one time that I got really irritated. Someone made a comment that you need to do something more significant. Well, what more significant thing can you do than to share the love of Jesus with the people who have no food, have no clothing, have no shelter, have no running water, have no electricity, day in and day out. Uh, you know, and this is to simply say, we're simply doing what Jesus would do himself, uh, delivering the oppressed, but at the same time helping people with material needs. You know what? We are so blessed, even though we are living in some perilous times, we're so blessed to have a home, we're so blessed to have a shelter over our heads, we're so blessed to have a vehicle, clothes on our back, food on our table, but there are people out there that don't have these things, that are losing these things. There are veterans out there on the street white clay out there that have been forgotten and abandoned by the government whom they served in the wars they fought to keep America safe from the enemy and fought on foreign lands and gave their blood and sacrificed their body parts, yet they're being left out there and now given to the addictions of alcohol and drugs because the powers that be have simply written them off as useless eaters. God forbid that we stand by and not just do anything, but we need to be out there praying, but also paying to get something done in response to these lives. These people have souls. They're precious people. The Native Americans are one of the most talented, gifted people I've ever seen in my life. And I believe that's why right now God himself is targeting the Native Americans for a resurrection, a revival. And I know I'm getting on my bandwagon. I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for it because I feel compassion for the people that I live with and that I serve. But, uh, you know, thanks to a man of God, like Doug and Joe Hagman and given us a platform to share our heart to share the concern of Jesus about these people things are changing here and you know what we're going to see more change we're, 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 we're not going to see local entities and tribal agencies and, and other uh, competitive uh, fuel companies bicker back and forth about whose responsibility is to fix uh, uh, um, something in a person's home where fumes are coming out and people are getting sick and then people not having uh, wood or electricity and, and people dying out here. We're not going to stand by idly and do nothing. We're going to do what Jesus would do. We're going to help. So for those critics out there that would say we're not doing enough, I'm sorry, I disagree. I'm sorry, I just... Sorry. Amen. 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 You know what? Um, you know what? Curtis and... It just spoke of you. Go ahead, Chuck. I want to say this, and then i got to take off. I mean, uh, if we are Christians, and we say we're Christians, and we, we follow the Word of God, then uh, we're told what we need to do with there to take care of other people, and even the smallest act uh, uh, to help somebody else, whether no matter what it is, however big or small, um, it is easy and it, it's, it's worth it. Uh, but, you know, we talk about action versus, you know, uh, inaction, thought versus results. Uh, it's not hard to take, you know, 10 minutes out of your day to do something nice for somebody else. And it makes the biggest difference in the world, especially to the person you're helping, who without that help, who knows what could or, or might happen. Uh, but it's nothing to a person who has the means and, and ability to help. And, we need to be more uh, compassionate as, as you are, Brother Marcus, and we need to be more open and to helping people. And if we had uh, half, half of everybody who was willing to do that every day, we have a different world to live in right now, but unfortunately we don't, and uh, it's sad, but... 
With that, I got to take off, and I want to thank you both for having me on. Just, just real quick, brother. Uh, there was a question that you uh, that you asked Marcus because you got an email, and uh, uh, I don't quite remember the question. But if you would just relay that, um, if you would just relay that. Yeah, uh, this is from, um, uh, this is from, um, uh, I'm not sure, Joan maybe, and it says sure that Brother Marcus, Marcus, Marcus and Curtis to comment on the one million, the return of one million square miles of Wyoming land to the Wind River Reservation. To the Wind River Reservation. Okay, uh, I'll be more glad to share, you know, and, and Brother Joe, if you have to go, um, please go and give your wife a big hug for me and Curtis, and we thank her for <laughs> allowing you to have this time tonight to be with us. We look forward to having you and Doug back again in the near future, and um, there is something that I would like to share on one of your upcoming programs at some point in respect to, you know, the enemy's divisive plan uh, to affect uh, our Earth and our planet. And having said that, let me address this question. But um, I believe that the people that have the original rights to property should maintain the rights to the property. I believe that people who have been robbed and have been the victims of theft through whatever means or whatever agency should be uh, re receiving just justice and just benefit of uh, reclamation and restitution. No, the scripture says that when the thief is found out that he should pay back sevenfold. And if there's an individual, if there's an agency or any entity that has been used uh, as a thief to victimize another person or another culture or another group of people, that culture deserves justice. That culture deserves, or deserves restitution and restoration to whatever degree. And I believe that we're going to see a lot of things uh, happen in the future in respect to people petitioning the Lord, who is a God of justice, and that as he renders uh, his judgment in their favor, you're going to see properties change, lands change, and in, in, in light of what's happening right now, I believe that God is wanting the people who have been victimized, whether it be Native Americans, Americans or any, any other culture of people to stand up for their rights. Our rights are being attacked every day. Our rights are being diminished every day. Uh, people talk about the Constitution. People talk about this right, that right. They're being targeted for elimination or limitation. And, and, and if you don't act now, if you don't stand up for what you have now, you won't have anything left. And you can do it in a righteous, reasonable manner. You don't have to be lawless, you don't have to be ignorant, but you can take a righteous stand for what God gave you. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the ability to access wisdom from heaven, to hold on to what you have, and yes, even get more. And let me address this, uh, Doug and you, Joe, you broke, did an excellent job in uh, approaching the subject of, you know, the, the transition of our economy. Well, let me tell you this tonight, believers out there, you who have a relationship with Jesus, you really don't need to be afraid. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a power of the sound mind. And if we're going to change our economy and our uh, financial system, uh, it, it, it's going to mean that we as believers have to learn to operate by the laws of the kingdom of God rather than operating by uh, debt laws or uh, laws that would enslave us more financially. This is not lawless talk. This is not rebellious talk. This is a biblical declaration that we need to learn how to access all of the provision of God through His Son, Christ Jesus. His Word says, My God shall supply all of your need according to His riches and glory. I'm believing that there's going to be a people who believe in Jesus so strong and so much in these end times that irrespective of what falls or what comes and what goes, there's going to be a God in heaven who's going to watch over his children. He's going to take care of them. He's not going to leave us as abandoned orphans. We've been adopted into his kingdom. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We're blood-bought, blood-washed children of God, and God is not going to forsake his children. I don't care what the White House does. I don't care what the Black House does. I don't care what the Outhouse does. God in heaven is going to provide for 
his children to those who have an existing covenant with him. If you're blood washed and blood bought and redeemed by the blood of Jesus, God has a commitment to you. He has a responsibility to you as a son or daughter to sustain you, to protect you, irrespective of what times you're going through, or irrespective of how bad things get. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share a, a, some things later in this broadcast. Amen. I've got to take one more break. But you need to get what I just said. God is a God of responsibility. He's a God of covenant. And once you receive this son, Jesus, that's why, amen, if you've not received Jesus tonight, I pray that the Holy Spirit convinces you, amen, that you need a Savior, that you need to meet Jesus. Because without Jesus in your life, you're going to face some things, amen, that are not going to be pretty. You're going to experience you maybe expect some things to go one way, but they're going to go another way. Now, I'm not saying that when you become a born-again Christian, everything comes up roses, because you'll have your trials, you'll have your tests. But even through tests and trials that you go through, God is able to mature you, keep you, and protect you. God washed over the children of Israel when they were in Egyptian bondage. They suffered some hard times, but there came a time that God delivered them from the uh, enslavement and, and, and the, uh, uh, the enslavement mentality that they were living under. And God brought them out through a sovereign move of His Holy Spirit. He brought them out through a miracle. The Red Sea divided and the horse and rider that tried to follow them were cast into the sea and drowned. They were brought into the wilderness that they might build God a tabernacle and worship Him. You see, Satan is after your ability to worship. He wants to stop you from worshiping God, your Father. He wants to stop you from worshiping Him in spirit and truth. He wants to take your joy. He wants to take your victory. He wants to take your strength. But there's a God in heaven tonight that is watching over you. There's a Father in heaven tonight that is so faithful that he, He's going to sustain you and keep you irrespective of what you go through. I don't care what comes up. I don't care what goes down. The Lord is faithful to those who have a covenant with Him. And if you're out there tonight and you've drawn a cold in your heart towards the Lord, or if you have backslidden or you've walked away from God, I plead tonight by the blood of Jesus that you remember what he did for you. Remember the joy of your first love. Remember the first day that you called upon the name of the Lord and you called him to be your Savior. Remember back when that joy and that peace was there. And if you went astray, I plead tonight that you come back to the Father. I pray that your lukewarmness will turn into a hot, holy passion, that you will again embark on that journey of a holy pursuit of a righteous God who is loving, kind, compassionate, and consider considerate. And for all you shields out there that are listening tonight, I pray for your souls. I pray for your blindness. I pray for the, the, the darkness of your mind. I pray for the strength that you're on because you're puppets. And, and, and you'll pay a price for being a puppet. But I pray for you because God cares about you. He loves you. He loved you so much that he gave Jesus his only begotten son on the cross of Calvary. That you might be free. That you might be born again. That you might not split hell wide open. He caused you, amen, to be loved. And and, and, and many tonight out there have grown cold. I feel this so strong tonight. You, 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 you feel like you're not good enough. You feel like you're not qualified enough. Look, God does not call the qualified. God qualifies the called. And you have been called. You've been called to come to Him, to know Him, to worship Him, and to love Him. So whatever blindness has been in your minds or hearts, I break that tonight in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ would penetrate that darkness of your mind and that you would be awakened by the Holy Spirit to come and live for Jesus. You know, living for Jesus, I don't care. It is, it is fun. It, it is fun. <laughs> irrespective of the trials and tests you go through, when Jesus loves you and you're in love with Him, it's a whole new world. And I want to maybe touch on some things in just a few moments. Uh, I didn't even intend to get on this roll here. I'm trying to answer a question and then preaching. But, but you have to understand the devil is a thief. And he has robbed us as a generation. He has stolen from us as a people, as a nation. 
But God wants to bring justice. God is a God of justice. You will not get justice from any agency or any entity that exists in a lawless world. The only place that you will get righteous judgment from is from a righteous God, amen, who sits in heaven and literally mocks at those who are, amen, planning and perpetrating the demise of the American society. Oh, God will let them go on for so long, but God's going to have the last laugh, and he's going to bring their plans to an end someday, and the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and Jesus Christ. And you know, the good thing about that, and glory to God, you and I as worshiping warriors can have a part in putting the devil and his demons in place in the proper timing of God, because there's coming a day that the adversary and all his demonic entities are going to have to pay the price for their rebellion. They're going to have to pay the price for the corruption of mankind. They're going to have to pay the price for corrupting the DNA of human beings. They're going to have to pay the price, amen, for um, influencing men seditiously to commit abortion and, 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 and who have committed homicides and, and, and perpetrated perversions throughout the land. This land is getting ready to vomit like it's never vomited before because the sin has come to fulfillment. The cup of iniquity has begun to run over and you're going to see the shakings of God continue. These things are going on within the weather patterns, within the uh, atmosphere, uh, upon the earth, under the earth. These things are not natural. These things are supernatural. God is allowing the things to be shaken that can be shaken. That one thing remains and that is the people who are in his kingdom to have a faith that will overcome the world. I love the scripture that says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You might be facing some dire straits tonight. You might be feel like you're having your back against the wall. But I decree and declare to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that he is a loving father. He's not forsaken you. He's not left you. He's not abandoned you. He's calling you tonight to know him in a most intimate way. And for you that already know Jesus, I'm telling you tonight, the Father has such more revelation and power and grace and authority and favor that he wants to bestow upon you in these end times. That you're going to stand like a bright burning bush in the midst of a dark night. You're going to brine, you're going to, you're going to uh, glow and you're going to beam with the light of God, the grace of Jesus in the darkness. And, and, and you're going to begin to attract people that has been bound by darkness, bound by ignorance, bound by uh, all kinds of spiritual schemes and plots and ploys of the adversary. You be the light and you can draw them to the darkness. When the light is turned on, darkness has to flee. You're the light. Jesus said you're the light of the world. And, and you're a city set upon a hill. Uh, and, and you cannot be hid. There are people out there tonight that are watching you. You don't even know they're watching you. And a lot of times, you can do more for them by living more than speaking. I'm not saying be ashamed of Jesus. I'm saying not to be ashamed of your testimony. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But there's a time, sometimes your life speaks more than your words. And so I admonish you tonight to be the light of Jesus, to be the light of the world as you're joined to him. He's the light of the world, but when you're joined to him, you're one spirit. So you've got that same fire. You've got that same flame. You've got that same glory, that same power and passion. Amen that Jesus had to obey the Father. You that are out there tonight that are hungry for the word of the Lord, we're going to be bringing you many, many more programs in the near future that is going to be a spiritual benefit to your spiritual diet. Many of you have been famished. You've grown lean. You've become sickly because you've not been taught or instructed in the word of the Lord, in the power and demonstration of this spirit. But I decree and declare by the word of the Lord tonight, you're about to be made fat. I'm not talking about physical weight. I'm talking about the fatness of the Word of God, the good Word of God, tasting of the powers of the age to come, the kingdom of God. God is about to replenish. God's about to restore. God's about to revive. So stay hungry. Stay thirsty and stay humble for Him. And just tell Father, Lord, I want every bit of you that I can get. I'm so passionate for you, Jesus. I just want to worship you and praise you and thank you and live for you 
and love you. So, Lord, right now, we just thank you that for those that are truly hungry tonight for the Word of God and the Holy Spirit's power and presence, we pray they feel that tonight. And, Father, give us the grace, give us the wisdom and the ability and the anointing that we need to feed the hungry. And I'm talking beyond material needs. We'll continue to feed the people that need natural food. But, Father, tonight my heart is to feed the people spiritually across the land and across the world that have not been able to get a good spiritual meal. They've been going through religious... Well, I'm not going to name a certain name, but they've been going through religious drive throughs and getting uh, uh, meat that's not meat. They've been getting substitute. They've been getting uh, falsehood. They've been getting doctrines of men and philosophies of men. They've not been getting the counsel of God. Father, give us the ability to feed the flock out there. To those that don't have a home church, Father, give us the words to speak to them. It'll be life and strength and joy and hope in the Holy Ghost. So, Father, we ask these things right now in Jesus' name, and we thank you for it. Um,